Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on editing and trimming audio in Adobe Audition CS6. The reason we use a video editing package is because we need to edit our video. The reason we use an audio editing package is because we need to edit the audio. And an audio editing package gives us far more power, far more capability, and far more performance in terms of processing audio than we can get from our video editing system. And the cool thing about Audition is regardless of whether you're using Premiere or if you're using Final Cut, both Final Cut 7 and Final Cut 10 can all export their files easily, move them to Audition to make your audio sound great. And that's what I want to talk about in today's session. Oh, by the way, we have this new subscription service. All of our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via subscription. This includes all of our Final Cut Pro 10 and our brand new Adobe CS6 training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This is the third webinar in a series looking at Adobe's new CS6 release. Earlier, we've talked about Adobe's Story and Prelude and Premiere Pro CS6, talking about scripting and ingest and editing. This week, I want to talk about Adobe Audition CS6. This is actually our second audition session. Today, we'll look at audio editing and some simple mixing. Next month, we'll have more on Premiere plus Adobe Media Encoder CS6, so our coverage will continue throughout the summer. What I want to cover today is to provide a closer look at the multi-track interface how to position, edit, and trim clips, how to set levels and pan, how to create audio level keyframes, how to work with a couple of key filters and some filters to avoid, how to export your mix for Premiere or for Final Cut, and how to test your mix for problems, which is a great feature because we can bring it back in and make sure that there's no clipping and that our levels are what we want them to be. If I play this clip, at whatever success I've had, is a side effect of having been trained as a mathematician. Okay, we've got this NASA footage. I want to import uh, an audio clip to go with it. Go up to the Files menu. We could import by going to File, Import, File, Keyboard Shortcut is Command-I. But there's a much more powerful feature that we have access to. It's called the Media Browser. This is like the browser inside Soundtrack Pro where we're able to look through the application to the operating system beneath. For instance, here, I have an audio clip which is stored on my desktop. Except getting to the desktop is kind of tricky. You double-click on Macintosh HD, you double-click on Users, you go to the particular home directory, you go to the desktop. That's cumbersome. What I want to do is I'd like to be able to build a shortcut that takes me there right away, or a shortcut to any hard disk. Very easy. To take any gold-boxed panel and blow it up full screen. You press the tilde key. That's the key right above the tab key. It takes it up full screen. Notice this plus sign right here. If you click on it, it says, do you want to add a shortcut that takes you to the desktop? The answer is yes. And now, under the shortcuts menu, there's the desktop. Well, I also have a, another place that I go a lot, Active Productions, and it's the source media folder where I've got a ton of source media. I want to add a shortcut for that. Add shortcut for source media. And now I've got two shortcuts. Now that I've got that set, because you can't see this button if the screen display is too small, press the tilde key. That brings the media browser back into something that's a little bit more small, <laughs> fits inside the interface. And let's go to the desktop. A couple ways that we can bring this clip in. I could grab the music clip and drag it up to the file menu. Pfft, boring. Or I could simply grab it from the media browser, play it. Ah, interesting. Or grab it, drag it to the timeline. That's exactly what I want to do. Now that it's in the timeline, we can start to edit it like any other clip. Notice that I'm moving the clip by grabbing in the title bar and dragging left or right. There's really two places that we can grab a clip. We can grab it at the top and we can grab it at the bottom. When we do, the clip moves from side to side. We can also drag it up and down and move it between tracks. The reason I advise against grabbing in the middle is this dark gray bar is the pan control. 
and the yellow bar is the volume control. We'll talk more about those a little later in this webinar. For me, I don't want to mess with settings that I've already done, so I click in the title or I click down here at the bottom. I'll just line it up with this marker right here. By the way, keyboard shortcut to set a marker is the letter M. This has been an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar entitled Editing and Mixing inside Adobe Audition CS6. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for Webinar 69. Thanks.